Have you been wondering how a private BIM cloud can help you work faster and smarter? Well, you're in luck. I'm Brian Smith for BIM9, and you're about to learn what a private BIM cloud is and how it can make your life a lot easier. Now, we broke this presentation into six segments, the first being this one, an introduction to private BIM clouds. At the end of this video, you'll have an opportunity to pick the next topic that interests you the most. In this video, we're going to talk about the cloud in general and specifically what a private BIM cloud is and why to consider a private BIM cloud. First off, what is the cloud? Now, there's a new industry term that's getting a lot of attention these days. You see it all over the internet, on TV, and even hear about it on the radio. But what does it mean? For the sake of our discussion, we'll use the cloud in two different ways. The first being remote storage, and the second is remote computing. But before that, where is the cloud? The cloud, or more accurately, the computers that are doing either the storing or the processing, can either be on your local network or access on someone else's. So let's break down the terms a little. Cloud storage has been around for a long time. We've used FTP, for example, to help share files that are too large to email. We've used cloud storage as some place to access files that are not on our local computer. Think about all those times you've emailed something to yourself in order to have it handy or just to get to it easily from a mobile device. Now, newer forms of cloud storage are popping up every day with synchronized applications like Dropbox, Google Drive, or Cubby. There are also many services that you can back up your important data or even entire computer to the cloud and later access it from anywhere over the internet, like Carbonite or iCloud. So in most instances, if you are editing files with software that's installed locally on your computer, then you're more than likely using cloud storage. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing, on the other hand, is where the data and the processing are both remote. This allows you to use a wide array of devices to realize the same computing power on the distant end. One generic example of cloud computing is when you begin to type that word into Google and it immediately starts to come up with all the common matches or keeping it in the Google family when you're editing a Google Doc, both the data and the processing are happening on the other end. With that, a private BIM cloud is an example of cloud computing. Both the data and the processing are happening within the private BIM cloud, or we like to call PBC. So a PBC is a computer or network of computers that have been virtualized, allowing multiple users to simultaneously access the secure system from any location with an internet connection. The PBC can be located in your office, a branch office, or in a data center. And finally, these computers can be workstations or servers that are capable of virtualizing their multi-core processors and have ample RAM to accommodate the number of users. The private BIM cloud in the form it's in today was developed out of necessity. The founders of BIM9, Lonnie Compton and Bill DeBevick, both worked at a large architectural firm in Las Vegas that focused primarily on designing casinos. This firm had many simultaneous projects spread out over several branch offices inside and outside the United States. They also used expensive, dedicated lines to form a wide area network with branch offices. Even with riverbed WAN accelerators, the time it took to open some large Revit models over the WAN could reach an hour since some projects had as many as 40 link components. So when the economy changed and so did their budget for lease lines, they knew that FTP and VPN were not alternatives because they had tried that before. Also, once some projects finished up, there were rounds of layoffs creating a surplus of high-end workstations. These factors the need and the equipment, or what spawned the ideas of the private BIM cloud. So the philosophy became, instead of trying to move the data to the end user with the high-speed workstation, they would move the user to the data on a private BIM cloud. This way, full-time employees, remote part-time employees, and contractors would all benefit for a fraction of the cost of the old lease line concept. Another reason the take the user to the data concept is valid 
is to fix the arrows. So how many conferences or BIM presentations have you sat through when you've seen diagrams like these? Whether it's building life cycle management, describing the design cycle or longevity of the building information model, we've all seen diagrams with architects and engineers and contractors and owners all around the BIM model, but no one really talks about how everyone can really all connect to and benefit from the same model at the same time. But that's exactly what a private BIM cloud will allow you to do. So that wraps up this segment. We've talked about what the cloud is, the difference between cloud storage and cloud computing. We talked about where the private BIM cloud came from, and we've talked about how taking the user to the data is a better solution than trying to move the data to the user. Now you can choose what you'd like to learn about BIM 9 and the private BIM cloud next. Just click on the link here in the video for a demo of accessing a Revit model on a private BIM cloud, a discussion on what hardware people are using to host a private BIM cloud, what challenges the private BIM cloud solves, hear what some clients have to say about BIM 9, or how to get started with a BIM 9 private BIM cloud in your office, including some specification and pricing. Thank you for watching, and again, I'm Brian Smith. If you have any other questions, be sure to check us out on the web at BIM9.com.